Hey guys, now both Samsung and Sony have announced their newest flagship devices, the Samsung Galaxy S4 and the Sony Xperia Z2. I wanted to make a spec comparison video here to see which one has the edge, at least in terms of the specifications. Now I'm also going to be going through with you some of my thoughts about each device and which one I'd personally choose. I also want to hear which one you'd personally choose, which one would you buy out of both of these, or maybe give me the reasons why you wouldn't buy either one. So yeah, here we go. Okay, so here we go. We've got the Galaxy S5 on the left and the Xperia Z2 on the right, and I just want to quickly start off with the design philosophies. Now you can see from these images both companies have pretty different design philosophies, they look wildly different. The Xperia Z2 has a little bit more bezel on the top and bottom over the Galaxy S5. They also use different materials. The Galaxy S5 is still using that plastic build which either some people hate or some people love. The good things about it is it's light and you can also remove the back panel to replace the battery. I know that's a, a something a lot of people love. The Xperia Z2 you can't do that but the materials are more premium. It uses aluminium and a glass combination which just is going to feel that little bit more premium in your hand, it's going to feel like a more expensive device. In terms of the footprints here, you can see from the dimensions that the Xperia Z2 is a little bit bigger overall than the uh, Galaxy S5, it's got a larger footprint only by a bit, but that's probably accounted for for the slightly larger screen on the Xperia Z2 as well. In terms of the weight, the Galaxy S5 is 145 grams compared to the Xperia Z2's 163, so nearly 20 grams heavier is the Xperia Z2. Again, that's probably down to that plastic build on the Galaxy S5, that is one of the pros of it, but it's kind of a weighing up option. Sometimes a really light device doesn't feel premium, whereas a heavier device does. So I'm not saying which one's better, but that's just something to take into account. Okay, so moving on, the Galaxy S5 has a fingerprint sensor and also a heart rate sensor on the back of the device. I actually find the fingerprint sensor to be a bit more useful than the heart rate sensor, at least in my opinion. You can use it to pay for different things. It's also PayPal certified. The Xperia Z2 doesn't have either one of those sensors. Both the devices are dust and water resistant, but they have a different IP rating. You can see that they're IP67 for the Galaxy S5 and IP58 for the Xperia Z2. So let me just tell you a little bit about these ratings. The first number you see is the protection against solid objects. That's the dust protection. You can see for the Galaxy S5 that's 6, for the Xperia Z2 that's a 5, and that scale ranges from 0 to 6. So the Galaxy S5 is actually completely dust resistant, that's the 6 rating. The 5 rating on the Xperia Z2 means it has limited protection against dust, that is no harmful deposits. So the Galaxy S5 is a little bit more resistant against dust. The second number you see is the water intrusion protection and that ranges from 0 to 8. Now the Galaxy S5 has a 7 which is basically protection against temporary immersion, that's why Sa uh, Samsung actually said don't leave it in water for too long. The Xperia Z2 on the other hand has an 8 which is protection against long periods of immersion over 1 meter and under pressure. So the Xperia Z2 does have better water resistance over the Galaxy S5. That's a little lesson for you guys, I hope you enjoyed that. We'll move on. Uh, both have 1080p displays, the Xperia Z2 has a 5.2 inch display versus the Galaxy S5 5.1 inch. They have different screen technologies, the Galaxy S5 is Super AMOLED versus IPS on the Xperia Z2. That's kind of your preference, loads of people either love or hate the saturated colours of the AMOLED display. I for one actually prefer the IPS more natural colours, so again that's just up to you guys, but the resolution is the same on both of these. Pixel density is a little bit different, the Galaxy S5 has a slightly larger pixel density because it has a slightly smaller screen, but honestly you probably won't notice. Okay, so moving on, both devices have a micro SD card slot so you can expand the storage. The S5 comes in a 16 or 32 gigabyte variant, whereas the Z2 comes in a 16 gigabyte variant. I'm not sure if that's quite correct, I'll have to double check that. In terms of the RAM, the Z2 has 3 gigabytes of RAM versus the Galaxy S5's 2 gigabytes of RAM. So the Xperia Z2 should have better multitasking, you shouldn't have to reload your apps as much, it should be able to keep more of your apps in memory at once, which should lead to overall a faster experience. But we'll have to see how aggressive Sony is with their multitasking, that might not be the case, but it's always better to have more RAM than less RAM. So moving on to the camera, and this is kind of a difficult one to judge. So the the Sony, sorry, the uh, Galaxy S5 has a 16 megapixel camera versus the Z2's 20 megapixel camera, but it's not all about how many megapixels you have. A 40 megapixel camera could actually look worse than a camera with 8 megapixels because of loads of different things like sensor size and pixel size. So we'll have to actually wait and see what these devices do when they come out to which camera is actually better. But you'll notice here that the Xperia Z2 actually has a bigger sensor than the Galaxy S5. So a bigger sensor is always better because it can actually get more of the shot in at once. So that's kind of interesting because it has more megapixels and a slightly larger sensor. Not by much, but it is larger. 
Now, I'm not sure about the pixel size on the Xperia Z2. It doesn't tell me, but you can see the pixel size there on the Galaxy S5. So again, we'll just have to wait and see what happens. Both of these shoot at 4K at 30 frames per second. They shoot at 1080p at 60 frames per second. Both have slow motion capture. Both have HDR and all that sort of stuff. So it's going to be really interesting camera comparison between these two devices. In terms of the front facing camera, they're pretty similar. The Sony Xperia Z has a 2.2 megapixel camera versus the Galaxy S5's 2 megapixel camera. Not much to say there. Both are running the latest version of Android, as you'd expect, 4.4.2. In this case, both are running the same chip uh, chipset, the Snapdragon 801, although we do know there's an Exynos variant of the Galaxy S5. So in terms of performance both of these are pretty close obviously benchmarks may vary because Samsung or Sony may be doing some a little bit of cheating on the benchmarks we'll have to wait and see and um, what actually happens with that other than that though we'll talk about what do we got here the battery life so the Galaxy S5 has a 2800 milliamp hour battery of course that's replaceable thanks to that back cover that you can uh, take off the Xperia Z2 has a 3200 milliamp hour battery, which is a huge battery. That is a massive battery, so it should get some really nice battery life there. But of course, you can't replace that battery, so you will need to carry a charge around if you're a super heavy user. But in all honesty, 2000, uh, 3200 milliamp hours, sorry, is a huge battery. That should easily last you throughout the day. So there you go, guys. You can see that both these two devices are really well matched. They really can go toe to toe. Sony with the Xperia Z2 has really made a device that can go head to head with the Galaxy S5. Yes, the Galaxy S5 has the fingerprint sensor and also has the heart rate sensor on the back, which the Xperia Z2 doesn't have. But in my opinion, the Z2 has the better design, it has the extra gigabyte of RAM. It has, it may have the better camera, we'll have to wait and see with the cameras, but it definitely has the larger battery, which should lead to better battery life, even though the Galaxy S5 has that ultra low power mode where it basically turns everything into black and white because it has an AMOLED display. But you can't really have any substitute for more milliamp hours on your battery. So we'll have to wait and see, but it's a really difficult decision between these two devices. Let me know what you guys think. Peace out.